Good morning, Sean here, Mountains Garage. Today let's talk about brake bleeding. And I've shot the intro to this video a few times because I'm trying to keep it simple, because it is. So let's start with a few concepts. One, if I'm working downstream of the master cylinder, and this is already installed and bled on the car, my goal is to keep this full. So for instance, on the Nova, I'm gonna change the front calipers and front hoses. I'm going to make sure this is full because it's currently working. Everything's fine in that area. And at my fluid connection, the steel where the steel line meets the flexible line, I have a inverted plug and an inverted union. I'm going to screw them together so this will close off a male line. And I'm going to break it right there over a bucket or a rag. Instantly put this on here and I'm upstream is full. It's going to stay that way and I'm free to do whatever I want at the wheel if it takes me forever. The real line on this car, when I did the 9 inch three summers ago, I've capped it and it's remained capped the whole time. You could drive it like this if you tighten it up enough. Uh, you wouldn't have the function of whatever you plugged off, but it's, it's a permanent connection and there's no rush at that point to worry about keeping this full and it's not drooling all over the floor, making a big mess. So that's scenario number one when I'm working downstream of the master cylinder. Now let's talk about changing the master cylinder. Now I see this a lot. People will go ahead and bench bleed the master. That's when you take lines and connect them back into the fluid, put it in the vise, and push on the plunger a few times until bubbles stop coming out in your fluid. Uh, these little flexible ones work really good too. A lot of them I have all bent up to do the same thing. These will stay in place. And you're free to stroke away and when this is pushing no bubbles, you're good to go. Now you're gonna put it on the car. Here's a trick that nobody does that I'm aware of. I never see anybody do it. Maybe you do it, I don't know. So bench bleed your master, take the old one off the car and it's, you gotta collect the fluid that's gonna run out of the old one, but the lines because they're up high in the car, they're higher than the calipers and rear wheel cylinders, they're not gonna leak any more fluid than a little bit. And they can sit there a long time. They're full of fluid, they're gonna stay there. Install your new master. Now take a, because I'm all by myself, I'll slowly stroke the brake pedal down with the lines disconnected, and I'll put a stick or something to hold it all the way down. And then I'll connect my fluid connections with the brake pedal depressed. And when I let go, it's gonna pull what little bit of air might exist between this and the line back up into the master and you don't have to touch the wheels. I've done this trick a thousand times. I had a motorhome. Uh, it would sit over the winter time and the fluid would run out the end. So I bought a reman master cylinder. It was not fun to change. And when that thing bled out, there was no pedal. I mean, nothing. You couldn't drive this thing. It was no safety. It was a Winnebago 94 Brave, pretty scary. Never made me feel comfortable when I was towing a trailer knowing that the brake system was no safety. There's no front or rear left, nothing. So I changed up the master the first year, used the same trick I just told you. Brakes were back, ran it all the year, no problem. It set another winter and the reman master cylinder ran out the hole. This went on for two winters. Clearly, I finally bought a new master and when I left it, it held the brakes over the winter, but same trick, I never went down to the wheels and I went from having no pedal whatsoever because this was empty and full of air to having a full pedal and I never cracked a bleeder on it. So again, the trick is to bench bleed your master, stroke the pedal down, gently, you gotta go slow because this will squirt six feet and you don't wanna make a mess. So just slowly push it down. I, I put a rag or a bucket under it because I don't like to make a big mess and brake fluid is nasty. If you get it on stuff, hose it down with water. Go get the hose and just hose it off, you'll be good to go. Uh, stroke it down to the bottom, put a two by four or something between the seat and the pedal to hold it all the way down. If you have a helper, there you go. And tighten up your lines, install them, because you had no lines on it before. Install, tighten them up, let the pedal come back up and you're, you're ready to drive. Unless you had a problem downstream and then you gotta start bleeding. Let's get into that. So in this scenario, your master's full and bench bled, whether you just put it on or it's been in the car for 20 years. Keep it full, 
this won't get air in it, no matter what, unless you allow the fluid to run out of it. So my favorite method is gravity. I will open the bleeder. Uh, I've done it every way possible. The, you know, the textbook says the longest line from the master. Open the bleeder and just wait. Doesn't take very long. When I, when I put whole brake kits on like a Chevy truck, it doesn't take very long for the gravity bleed out. It's fluid, it goes pretty fast. However, if you want to speed it up, at the end of the pretend this is the bleeder, take your blow gun and blow across it. And that'll cause a venturi and it'll suck it right out of there. This is no tools again. If you've got a blow gun, you can speed up your process. Be careful because when it starts coming out, you're going to blow fluid everywhere. Now getting into tools, if I had to use a tool to bleed brakes, which I try to avoid, uh, the Vacular or something that's a brand, uh, it's a rig and there's, there's no name brands that does the same thing. It snaps onto your bleeder screw and uses shop air and basically does the same thing. I was just telling you, it sucks on the end of it. In this case, it has a little flexible hose and a container so it's not making a mess. You clip it on the bleeder, you put shop air to the sucker and it sucks out the air and fluid. I find they're okay. It seems to draw in extra air. You're always seeing bubbles in the clear hose. So I just take it off and then it'll probably finish gravity bleeding. Gravity bleeding is pretty much foolproof. So when I'm gravity bleeding, I'll get fluid at a wheel, I'll cap it off, I'll do the other end of the axle, go around do that, make sure my master doesn't get low, but it's such a slow pace. You can usually keep up with it. A lot of times I have to go up on a ladder and fill up the master, but this whole process probably is gonna take a few minutes. Uh, I did uh, my mother's Honda Civic. By the time I got the bleeder open and went back to just check the master, it was already coming out. So and I did the, every, every brake line on that car. And I've, I've repeated the scenario for years and years. Once upon a time, I worked on a guy's race car. He was a tool salesman. And he would give me tools for working on his car. He gave me a giant pot pressure bleeder. Now that thing would really get the job done. However, if you made a mistake, it would paint the ceiling with brake fluid. The trick is if you're gonna use a pressure bleeder, they connect here, they even have on a Chrysler style master cylinder, it had pieces that went right down and sealed into the bottom. On a regular iron master cylinder, it clamps over the top for the most part, sometimes it, it oozes out. And you introduce pressure to it, you filled it up with air, it's got a bladder. And now you've got pressure all the time here and you go around and crack your bleeders in very spectacular fashion. It sprays fluid everywhere and it will get your brake system bled. If you forget to disconnect the pressure pot and then go back and open a bleeder, you still got pressure when you can disconnect it here. And I can tell you when I had just had uh, my Chevelle freshly painted and when you spray it with brake fluid, it's not a good feeling. But again, go grab the hose, run as fast as you can and hose the thing down and you'll probably be okay because brake fluid doesn't like water. On my Model A, I have this mounted backwards between my legs down under the floor. So it is on the same level, if not below the calipers and the rear wheel cylinders. When I go to bleed that, the front, I'll probably unbolt the calipers and hang them down to the floor and gravity bleed them. I've done this a zillion times on drag cars. And then the rear, I'll just jack the front of the car up so it's higher than the back and it'll gravity bleed out as well. Because gravity is my favorite method because I'm always by myself and it doesn't make a big mess. I keep waving this Chrysler style master cylinder. This is for an 87 Dodge van. It's my favorite. I've used this on disc, disc, disc drum, always in manual, but you can run it in power. This also fits my uh, Dodge D184. I mean, Chrysler used pretty much the same cylinder. Different bore sizes. The smaller the bore is supposed to give you a better pedal feel than a big bore. Big bore master cylinders like inch, inch and a quarter are typically for power brakes. Uh, I find in this style master cylinder, they all feel pretty good. It doesn't rust. It's aluminum body, plastic. You, I swear you could mount it upside down and it wouldn't leak. And it's gonna look like this 10 or 15 years from now where if you put a, if you buy a lot of the brake kits, you know, four wheel disc conversion kits, power brake, they come with a iron style GM master cylinder, which works great, but brake fluid, rust. 
it's gonna rust either inside or outside if it gets any moisture on it. You can paint it and the paint's gonna peel off. This you don't need to do anything to. It's pretty-ish the way it is. Uh, this kit's to mount it on just about every firewall. You can make your own, offset it up and down, use all four holes. It's about as universal as it gets. This is my choice and they're like brand new, 28 bucks. Uh, Strange sells the same version. They do make a nice uh, threaded connection for your master uh, cylinder push rod. Uh, if you're building custom stuff, just make sure whatever you do that the rod can't fall out. That's what, the, that's what it's all about. Chrysler has a little rubber band around the push rod that kind of snaps in here. Either way, I like it. It's my choice. All right, so that's pretty much it. It's not a big complicated subject, but it will make a big mess. Like everything's painted on the Nova. I don't want to get brake fluid all over it. So I'm going to gently, I'm going to cap my lines and I'm working on it. And then I'm going to gently uh, let it gravity bleed out. I put a rag right next to the bleeder screw and I got a little water and a spray bottle when I'm done. I shouldn't make a mess. If you're just slogging on some old rusty stuff outside in the dirt, don't worry about it. Spray it everywhere. It doesn't matter. But if you're trying to do nice work, who am I kidding? If I was outside in the dirt, I'd still try to do it the neatest way possible. My shop may be a mess, but I do try to work neat. It's a goal. You gotta have goals. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.